a lot of people might wonder about what the best steel roller coasters are, and so have I. So that's why I made a list of the top 10 steel roller coasters that I've ridden. But that's just all of the ones I've ridden so far. As I go to more parks in the future, this list could change. So this is just for as of September 2015. So, let's start at number 10. We have Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is a great ride. It has really nice fuller airtime, has really good turns, it's a nice location. It's just an overall really excellent ride. And now at number 9, we have Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point. Yup, the first hyper coaster. And this has extreme airtime. Wow. You're just out of uh, you're just out of your seat on almost every hill. And lots of people say this ride is rough, but I actually didn't find it to be very rough. And now at number 8, we have Sky Rush at Hershey Park. This is the most intense coaster I have ridden. The airtime is extreme. Seriously. If you go on this too many times, a lot of people have said that it could bruise your thighs. Is that intense. And also, the turn's really nice. I love how it's above that lake. And it's just short, but it packs all the elements in. It's awesome. And now, at number 7, we have Storm Runner, also at Hershey Park. This one's sort of like a co. This one I really like because it reminds me of another coaster... We'll see later on in the list. But right now, let's talk about Storm Runner. It has inversions with some of the craziest hang time ever. It's just fast. The drop is great. The launch is awesome. And it's just an overall really good ride. Again, it's a short ride, but it really doesn't need to be any longer. Because it just does so much in such a short amount of time. And now at number 6... We have a new ride, Wicked Cyclone, at Six Flags, New England. Wow. This ride is awesome. You have airtime, you have inversions, you have lateral G-forces, more than I was expecting, and even a lot of positive G-forces. But the reason why this one isn't higher is because near the end of the ride, after the final inversion, it should have been over there. But it sort of just gets sort of slow at the end of the ride. And it sort of takes away from it. It just seems kind of like filler. At the end of the ride, they should have just put a turn and sent you back to the station. But that's just my opinion. And now the top five. Number five is an awesome roller coaster. And it's Bizarro. At Six Flags, New England. Yup, I think this is better than Wicked Cyclone. And uh, lots of people say they don't like the restraints. But I thought they were fine. Like, they're better than Sky Rushes, that's for sure. But yeah, this ride is awesome. I love the tunnels you go into. The airtime's great. All the turns are really good. It's just like, overall, just a really good all-around experience. Also, I like how it's an out-and-back in the first half, and then it sort of turns into a twister coaster. And that's really nice. And now number four is Apollo's Chariot at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. Yeah, this ride... I wasn't expecting it to be as good as the other hyper coasters I've been on. But wow, this one really blew me away. The airtime hills are great. Not as much airtime as, like, Nitro or Skyrush or Magnum or any of those. But it's still enough to keep you excited. But what I really like is I love how you're in the woods and how you just go along the train. But my favorite part of the ride is that turnaround halfway through the ride where you just go into that helix. is just one of the best moments on any coaster, in my opinion. And now we're in the top three. Now, number three 
is a bit of a controversial choice. And number three is also at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and it is Alpengeist. Yes, I think this coaster is a masterpiece. I really love B&M Inverts, and they are amazing. And this one's the best out of the ones I've been on. And the first thing is the inversions are so forceful. You just you're just glued to your seat, and your feet are just dangling, and all the blood's just rushing to your feet for like a solid ten seconds. It lasts from the vertical loop through all the way through the cover roll, and it's awesome. And lots of people say this ride is rough, but it wasn't really that rough. It was rough because it was sort of jerky on the cover roll and brake run. Because it, it was, it's like it sort of feels like the car is going to fly off the track, but it doesn't really give you any head banging. But just, and the theming is awesome. I love how you just go along the terrain and you have the snowy trenches. That's really cool. And now. Number two was my number one for a while, but now it's number two because of a coaster I've recently ridden, and it is Maverick at Cedar Point. This ride has everything. J just everything. Seriously, it has everything. And that's all I have to say. And now my number one choice is also a bit of an unexpected one. But it is Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood. Wow. This ride is extreme. And so, so you do the first drop, which is a curving drop. But it's actually pretty good. Probably the best curved drop on a coaster I've done. Other than Alpengeist's. But yeah, it's pretty good for a curved drop. And it's pretty decently sized. But then you go up, and then you go into that ravine. And that's the biggest drop. The second drop's the biggest. And you go through Thunderbolt supports. And then from there on, you just do turns. You do airtime hills. Insane airtime hills that just eject you. You go through just complete awesomeness. And this ride also has an interesting history. It used to be a looping coaster with over-the-shoulder restraints. But no one liked it because it was rough. So they made it a hyper coaster. And it's just great, smooth. The terrain, how it interacts with the terrain, wow. That's amazing. And so that's why it's my favorite steel roller coaster. And so, that was my list. Bye.